Doctors of Reddit, what was the most shocking case of, oh, I thought that was normal, you've seen in a patient? ERMD here had a patient come in for cast removal literally years after it had been put on. She just decided it wasn't worth taking off. Her leg skin was literally growing over the top of the cast and then down it. Once we finally cut the cast off, she was surprised to find that she had no skin underneath, but the dead tissue over her muscles and bones was being cleaned by about 300 maggots. I knew by the smell that something under there wasn't right, but wasn't expecting that. Patient seemed completely fine with it. Whatever. Edit, I've got tons more of these stories. That was just the first one that came to mind. Wait, growing over the cast? How does that even happen? Would skin start to grow over, say, a rubber band if I left on around my leg for a few years? I imagine so. Look at the animals that get abandoned and have collars or wires wrapped around their necks. Their skin begins to grow over it or it becomes infused with their bodies. So what you're telling me is, if I glue a gun to my arm, can I theoretically become Mega Man? MD here. A couple years back, had a walk-in complaining for a few months of abdo pain slash swelling. I crap you not, the man was Simpsons character yellow with jaundice and ascites, fluid filling the belly. He seemed shocked when I told him I was calling the hospital to arrange direct admission. ER nurse here, guy probably went to the ER where they probs did a CT scan of his abdomen and pelvis. Probably did a paracentesis, removal of abdominal fluid using a needle to reduce his abdominal swelling. Blood test to check liver enzymes, electrolytes, blood count to check for infection, and also acetaminophen, Tylenol, level to check for toxicity. A thorough history to check for excessive alcohol consumption, which may cause liver cirrhosis. Agree with other poster who said liver failure is a long circling of the drain, a brutal death I wouldn't wish on an enemy of mine. Ahem. Please continue. Liver failure. Not a doctor, but a patient. I went in for thigh hip pain. I couldn't lie on that leg for more than 30 seconds without pain. I thought it was muscular, and my doctor thought it might be radiating back pain. I had several x-rays and learned I had broken my hip sometime in the past, had a floating bone chip in my hip, degenerative disc beneath, a birth defect in my spine, and mild scoliosis. Holy crap, I hope you had good insurance. That's brutal. How are you now? Luckily, I did and still do. I'm doing well, just some painful days and some not. I avoid putting strain on my back, had two rounds of physical therapy, and have a routine for when my back hurts. Ice packs and Advil help when I rest. Scoliosis is actually pretty common, especially as mild as mine. At least it wasn't bonitis. When I was a med student, we visited a clinic in the country where I studied. Lots of people woof get horrible injuries and use the local elixir of dirt slash motor oil slash spit from the local old lady to patch an exposed arm bone or whatever. Had one woman in her 20s come in with a fungating breast cancer that looked like a hard mushroom slash mold growing through the skin and to the outside world, constantly bled any time you touched it. Her family shamed any injuries or impurities, and she thought she just needed to keep it covered until it got better. Unfortunately, I have seen this on two occasions, both at hospitals that were in middle to upper class communities here in the U.S., one was a 40-year-old woman, a successful business owner, and fully insured. Her sister made her go to the ER because she's COCP. She was asked to put on a gown for an EKG. I will never forget the sight or odor of her breast. It literally looked like green hamburger. Sadly, she did not seek care sooner because she said she was embarrassed by the appearance and later the odor. I followed her care as best I could. She went through bilateral mastectomy, radiation, TX, and chemo. She survived another three months of hell before she passed away. The second patient was a 28-year-old mother of two. No insurance and had to work to feed her family. She was seen for a complaint of neck pain. Physical exam x-ray revealed both breasts to be full of tumor. I know she had a double mastectomy and I lost track of her for some time. Apparently, two years later, I ran into her at our kids' gymnastics meet. She was in remission and doing really well. Takeaway, ladies, guys too, please do yourself breast exams. Seek care ASAP if something feels off. That odor really is no joke with cancer. In late stages, you can recognize it across a room. Just as a caution, don't do an image search for fungating breast cancer while eating. I don't know if this fits, but here's a story about my husband. We were messing around and he chased me through the kitchen, took a hard left turn and lost his footing, fell on his side. He's a big dude, so falling is a bit more traumatic for him. He couldn't put pressure on his leg and knew immediately he was hurt pretty bad. He was able to crawl to the couch and once settled said he wasn't in too much pain. 
he decided to sleep on the couch that night so he wouldn't have to go upstairs. We made a point in the morning for the ER so we wouldn't have to sit there all day, but they didn't have an opening until 2, so we just hung out at the house. He was in a decent amount of ambient pain, but it didn't seem emergent. Once we got to the hospital, we find out that he had broken his hip, in this case breaking off his entire ball joint from the top of his femur. The nurses said they couldn't believe that he was able to sit up and had slept on it, implying that we should have come the night before, and probably by ambulance. It required surgery with some hefty bolts to put it back into place. But the crazy part is that apparently a healthy 30-ish year old man breaking his femur from standing is highly unusual. After several tests and an MRI, it turns out he was in the early stages of osteoporosis due to a pituitary tumor in his brain. So we discovered a benign brain tumor all because dude was wearing slippery socks. Holy smokes! How's he doing now? He's fine. He can't do certain exercises like running, which he hated anyway, and he's on meds to shrink his tumor, which have worked beautifully. His osteoporosis is almost reversed. The end result there is similar to my dad. He tripped over our dog's outside line and hit his behind pretty hard on the stairs outside. When he went to get checked for that, they found a tumor on his kidney. Thankfully, they caught it early and removed the kidney. If he hadn't have tripped and fell that day, who knows how long it would have taken for symptoms of the tumor to actually present themselves. Patient here. Went to the doctor for a note to have a day off work since I didn't feel great and just didn't want to work. Doctor poked me in the stomach, said, that's not normal, and sent me off to have a scan, which took me two months to get around to. Two weeks later, I get a letter from the doctor asking me to come in. Changed my shift so I can go, and the doctor went off at me for not coming in sooner and told me to go home and pack a bag. I'm off to the Royal Brisbane. It might be cancer. More scans later, and it's decided that it's not cancer. It was a four kilogram cyst. My only symptom was an enlarged stomach and the you're getting fat comments from my mother. Shout out to the RBWH for being a tops place for various things. Always average to above good experiences there, honestly. Huh, never thought I'd see the good old RBWH mentioned in a random post in Reddit. Between that hospital and the Princess Alexandra, they have saved my life three times. I've probably cost the system a couple of million over the years. Praise be for universal healthcare. Patient here, I thought everybody got itchy when playing outside. Turns out I'm allergic to every pollen, grass, mold in the state, and I shocked the doctor during my allergy test when she came back and my whole body was red slash lumpy. Kind of similar to this, I always broke out in hives on my legs in gym class or when I would exercise growing up. In high school, a dermatologist finally discovered that I'm allergic to my own sweat. She said she had seen a couple of cases of it throughout her career. I take a daily allergy pill now and I'm fine, but definitely a fun fact I can bring up. Imagine your body saying, hmm, here is this harmless liquid that I create to cool myself. Let's make it into a mortal enemy and attack ourselves like madmen. I started taking stinging nettle as an alternative natural antihistamine. I used to take a ton of Benadryl for allergies. I found the nettle to be pretty effective. Not a doctor, but have a story. My oldest son was 11 years old and needed a physical for youth tackle football. We had a new doctor, so she went into more detail than most physicals. He complained that his ankle hurt during the middle of baseball season, so she asked if she could take off his shoe. When he did, she immediately points to the side of his foot where there was a strange bump and informed us he had a broken foot. I didn't believe her, as I pointed out he had the same thing on his other foot as well. She took a look and said, oh, he has two broken feet, and sent us over to get x-rays from the hospital. I was laughing, thinking this was so crazy, believing there was no way my son, who not only finished playing in a baseball tournament, but who was running and jumping at the swimming pool literally an hour before, had two broken feet. After the x-rays were completed, my smile quickly faded as the doctor was right. This is when we learned about completely flat feet, and the damage stress fractures can do when they go undetected. Eight weeks of cast and special shoes and insoles for the rest of his life solved the problem. His feet are still deformed, but it never slowed him down. The question I have is, if it didn't hurt so much, then did he really need casts? If it was caused by having flat feet, then he probably had fractures before that healed, okay? No? I can't believe he was so active while also in a lot of pain. What would have been the outcome if he didn't get casts? He had a walking cast on the foot he said felt weird at the ankle as the stress fracture was severe. It was one of the bones at the top of his foot. The other foot had a hairline stress fracture, so he only had to try to stay off it as much as possible. Because crutches mean you put all your weight on one foot, 
we had him use a wheelchair for six weeks with another two with limited crutches until both healed. The x-rays showed these were not the only stress fractures he had growing up, so my guess is he just thought the pain was normal due to how many activities he did. I believe he felt the pain the same way you do after being on your feet all day when you're not used to it. I do remember making a comment about how he was always asking for new shoes but thought it was because he was growing or just wanted them. I never would have guessed it was because there was an issue to his actual feet being broken. Because he was so old when we discovered he was completely flat-footed and he wasn't wearing the right shoes with insoles, his feet are deformed in a way as he has permanent bumps on the sides of his feet that stick out like your ankle bones stick out. By the way, after I told my mom, she told me she wasn't surprised as her two brothers, my uncles, both had completely flat feet too. This is the same parent who only told me after my youngest son had an emergency surgery to remove his appendix at the age of four that my father and both aunts had to have theirs removed before they were five years old as well. Would have been nice to know that when the surgeon asked about family history or appendix problems. Point being, make sure your children know as much family medical information as possible. Well, I'm glad I read this. A few weeks ago, we took my three-year-old to the doctor because we thought he had a broken foot. No real catastrophic event, just started limping more and more every day. X-rays showed nothing because teeny three-year-old feet bones don't really show up at all on X-rays. They put a cast on him, it did not slow him down. He even wore a hole in the bottom from running around so much. He had the cast for two weeks and the docs thought, that's probably good. The doctor also commented that he has completely flat feet and said he needs to wear shoes. My son hates shoes, especially in the summer. Two days later, he starts limping again. I currently have to call into the doc about getting him back in. Maybe he has a stress fracture in his tiny foot. I was the patient. Got a new OBGYN, my fourth due to moving several times, and went for a checkup. Braced myself for the horrible pain and winced as soon as the speculum touched me. She immediately stopped, and as it turns out, extreme V slash vulvar pain isn't normal. But I just had three OBGYNs who apparently don't give an F that I nearly cried in pain every time I was checked. Edit. Because several people in comments have asked, my doctor called it vulvar vestibulitis and said it's called a bunch of different things, that the name gets changed every few years. I think the term most used now is vulvodynia. No known cause, maybe too many nerve endings in the area? Definitely bring it up to your doctor if you're experiencing this. From what I know now, some discomfort is normal, but the knife-like pain is not. I'm doing somewhat better now thanks to some physical therapies and a lidocaine ointment I can apply beforehand. Also, if you think you may have this and need to find a new doctor, I recommend finding a woman, and the younger the better, as education seems to be improving. And talk to them before they touch you, and if they dismiss your concerns, find someone else. You don't need to worry about offending them. This is your body. Your health is more important than a doctor's feelings. If you have trouble speaking up for yourself like I do, take a trusted person with you to help advocate for you. Three effing doctors ignored you. A lot of doctors don't take women's pain seriously. It's beyond annoying and can have serious consequences. D slash ask women had a thread recently. I can't believe the husband stitch is legal. Resident doctor here, although not an OBGYN. In my OBGYN rotation in medical school, I had a patient who was a first-time mother having difficulty nursing her baby. The patient said she had some redness and it had been hurting to nurse on one nipple, so she had often had to switch until finally it became unbearable for her to nurse from either. She had mentioned she thought her nipples might be cracked or chafed. When it finally came to the exam, she had the most chafed nipples I had ever seen. It looked totally raw and macerated to the point that they looked like two large pepperoni slices. One of her breasts also looked like the wound had led to mastitis. It definitely led to a new appreciation of how difficult breastfeeding can be on new mothers. OMFG, my vag just so herself closed. Watching my wife suffer through the same type of pain after our first child was born has left a huge impact on me. No one told us that the nursing could be as bad as the birth itself. I love that woman. I remember panicking when there was blood in my firstborn spit-up. Turns out it was from my nipples. The chafing caused scabs and they tore off every time he nursed. It was a rough few weeks. MD here. Patient came in saying he was feeling a little tired and noticed he was having a harder time doing his job in construction, a particularly difficult type of construction. Turns out he had slowly lost 80% of his blood over the course of a few months. Dude was a bad butt to be working as hard and long as he was with only a fifth of normal blood volume. 
hemoglobin was low twos. Not being cheeky, where was it going? Like, how was he losing it? Stomach ulcer. I think it was from taking ibuprofen every day to dull the construction pain, but don't remember. Not a doctor, but I was rushed to the ER when I was 23. When I got there, I was admitted as an undiagnosed type 1 diabetic. The, oh, I thought this was normal bit is that, while living undiagnosed for about a year, I dropped 80 to 100 pounds. I weighed 120 pounds and was as weak as I was frail. I'd stopped going to the gym months beforehand, so I just thought, well, I was skinny as a kid, makes sense I would get this small if I stopped eating and working out. What was your blood sugar when you were finally diagnosed? 904, and my A1C was 19.5. It, uh, wasn't a good look. Holy crap, I didn't know it could go that high. Work at a dentist's office. Patient presents for an exam, concerned part of her tooth has chipped off. On examination, it is not in fact a tooth that chipped off, but rather a piece of calculus, which is buildup of hard tartar that covers your teeth over time when you don't brush them. It can be small deposits, or in this case, an entire bridge covering her actual teeth. She thought the calculus was tooth material and was quite shocked to learn we were actually unable to see her real teeth and she'd need an extensive cleaning to remove it all. A piece of calculus. I knew my suspicion that math was unhealthy was justified. She's lucky it was just differential calculus growing instead of vector or multivariate. I want to give you an award so bad, but I don't have enough coins, so please accept this poor person's gold. When I was a medical student, a patient and his brother came in together. Patient was just a post-op visiting after a hernia repair. Found out he had another baseball-sized hernia. His brother, on the other hand, had literally had a football-sized hernia visibly coming out of his left leg of his shorts. Looked like an inguinal hernia, and he was able to use it as an armrest. I asked him if that bothered him at all, and he straight up said, My brother's hernias were painful, but this isn't, so I thought it was just a quirky defect. I hope he was lying to save face, but we recommended he get it taken care of. This must be more common than I thought. When I was 10 years old, I had a hernia that pushed my intestines down into my balls. It looked bad, but I honestly didn't feel a thing. I told my mom right away because I'm not the sort to ignore things, and the doctor was astonished I wasn't in severe pain. They actually waited two months to fix it so I could finish fifth grade and have the surgery in summer because my pain was zero. Bonus, because of this, we finally figured out about 20% of the nerves in my body don't work which explained a lot of issues I'd had before. And we figured out I need at least triple doses of anesthetic to be put under or have pain dulled. My body is awesome, but deeply weird. I was that patient. I thought I just had some bad personality qualities. Turned out it was a rare kind of schizophrenia. What type of qualities, if you don't mind saying? I am particularly talking about abulia. I thought being unable to get up and eat equals being lazy. Apathy, shyness, not being friendly enough, I'm generally not rude but not affectionate either and some people would say I acted like a robot. And overthinking. Also worsening hygiene is a red flag. Now I'm on medications and my symptoms are better. I feel pretty good most of the time. I had the same thing, went in for neuro stuff, turns out I am likely schizoaffective. Psychiatrist wouldn't diagnose me on the first visit. And then COVID hit so haven't been back. I've been reading this thread for way too long, and in my opinion, this is the most WTF story in here. Yeah, I will never forget it. Afterwards, when the resident was writing her encounter note, she turned to me and said, How many hairs do you think we pulled out? I shrugged and said, I don't know, 500? She thought for a second and said, I think it was closer to 1,000. I'm going to put 1,000. I'm not a doctor, but I did used to work in the emergency department of a pretty big hospital. This one lady came in with complications with her pregnancy. Apparently a lot of things were going wrong, but she just thought that was a part of pregnancy until someone pointed out to her it was not. It turns out she had a miscarriage. That was not a fun day. You never forget the cry of a mother who just lost a child. The worst thing about this is that so many otherwise alarming things are normal during pregnancy. Swollen feet, nosebleed for two months straight, face covered in dark splotches, horribly constipated for weeks slash months, bladder prolapsing. Don't worry, pregnant lady, that's normal. There's a conspiracy of silence about the physical and mental toll that pregnancy and childbirth can have on women. My mother once told me that if she'd had to go through what some of her friends had, she'd have stopped it too. As child six of seven, that made a big impact on me. That's almost too sad to share, man.
Not a doctor, but I was talking with a few girlfriends, and I casually mentioned that I hadn't had a period in three months, and that when I do have them, they're either two days or a month straight. I did not know that was not right. That's the same for me, and whenever I go to any doctor for anything, they ask when was my last period. They look so worried and give me a PT. And I hate it because I sit there awkwardly with that yep face while waiting for the results because I know I'm not pregnant, but they're staring at me like my life is about to change forever. Exactly. Every time I tell someone I haven't had a period for three months, they get this look like there's something I don't know. I am a virgin. Unless this is a Jesus and or Anakin situation, I think I'm good. Have been accidentally artificially inseminated with a recovered cancer patient's only frozen semen sample? Only. Patient. One day my stomach area just started randomly hurting really bad. I thought I just had a regular stomach cramp. After three hours of the worst pain ever, I went to urgent care and it turns out I had appendicitis. And my appendix ruptured in the worst way. I had to get surgery to get it removed the same night. That was five days ago. Edit. Appendicitis can happen to literally anyone at any point. If you feel completely drained of energy slash fatigued and have intense stomach pain so bad you can barely breathe, please go see a doctor and don't hold off like I did. Get off Reddit, don't make yourself laugh, or cough. It's been rough. The pain is mostly gone, but the antibiotics they gave make me puke constantly. I'm having the time of my life here, if you couldn't tell. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.